This is a goose feather, actually, a jumbo goose. Very large, very nice to cut. It's a primary pointer, that is, it's one of the five to seven largest flight feathers on the wing. We need to get rid of all the parts of the feather that will get in our way. We'll begin by using wire cutters to snip the feather in half. The fluffy barbs of the feather can get into the ink and smear it. So we'll get rid of that too. We'll peel them away and all we have left is the barrel of the feather. When you look at the end of the barrel, you see that it's closed. We're going to have to open that up to do the following steps that we need to. Once again, we can use our wire cutters to snip off the end or the butt of this uh, barrel of the feather. On the inside of the barrel, there is a membrane that we have to fish out. We can simply take a clothes hanger with a little hook at the end of it and uh, plunge it into the barrel and fish out this membrane. Get all of it out that you can. There's also a membrane coating the outer surface of the barrel. We're going to have to get rid of this as well. For this, we can take our quill knife and simply skim away the membrane that coats the outer surface of the barrel. Uh, if we don't do this, it's going to be too slick uh, to use for our feather for our quill. Here's a side-by-side -side view of the feather, showing that first we've snipped the end to open it up, then we fished out the membrane from uh, the inside with a clothes hanger, and then we've skimmed away the membrane on the outside. Top before, bottom after. We're going to want to clarify or harden the feathers in order so that when we're riding, the broad edge nib will maintain a crisp edge. Counterintuitive to that, in order to make it hard, first of all, we have to make it softer. To do that, we will plunge the feather, or in this case the feathers, into a glass of water overnight. This will make them softer and milky. That color is a telltale sign that the feathers are soft. In the process of clarifying or curing the quill, the color change of the feather is so important. Because we've put it in water overnight, it's become this soft, milky color. That will change once we do the following steps. It will become much clearer and much harder and it'll hold up and keep a good crisp edge when plunged into the ink. I use a simple stamp pad for the next step. I hold the barrel of the quill in my hand so that it fits in my hand very comfortably. I then place the barrel of the nib onto the stamp pad. It makes a little red mark on the underside. This little red mark is an indicator to me where I'm going to center my next two cuts, the first and second scoop cuts, which are so very important. If I'm off to the left or to the right just a little bit, the quill will not fit comfortably in my hand. I found by making this little mark on the underside of the quill is a key to getting a good centered cut for the scoop cuts. With my quill knife, I make my first scoop cut. It's about an inch and a quarter away from the tip of the barrel of the quill. I'm removing about one-third of the mass of the barrel. This is it, viewed from the side. Here's that same first scoop cut, viewed from the bottom side of the quill. Using my quill knife, I make my second scoop cut. It starts about three-eighths of an inch away from where I began the first scoop cut. You can see it very readily here from the underside of the quill. This is the way that same second scoop cut looks as viewed from the side. The cut was made with the quill knife. 
I had made those scoop cuts into the quill while it was still soft and milky. It was much easier to cut at that point. Now we have to harden, we have to clarify or cure the quill, and we do that by plunging it into very, very hot sand. You get the sand so hot that when you sprinkle a little water onto the top, it sizzles and dances. It's easy to burn your hand when you're clarifying or curing the feathers with this hot sand, so I will use an of glove when I shovel the hot sand into the quill. Using a large spoon, I fill the entire barrel of the quill with a very, very hot sand. Next, I plunge the feather into the hot sand. I leave it there for two or three seconds and then check on it. If it doesn't seem to be clarified enough, I'll repeat it a second or even third time until it does seem to be clear enough. I'll shake the sand out just to make sure, and I'll repeat the whole process if it's not quite clarified enough. Unfortunately, if you leave the feather in too long or you get it too close to the bottom of the skillet, it can actually fry the endings of the quill, and you don't have as good a product to try to cut. These aren't ruined, they're still salvageable. However, there are instances when the sand is so hot, all it takes is a few extra seconds and it ruins the entire quill. The bottom two are still salvageable, you can still cut those back, but the four on top uh, look pretty bad. There's no way to save those. You can see here how the quill has gone from a kind of milky color to much clearer. The inside of the barrel, however, is very slick, and if we would try to load it up with ink, the ink or the gouache, whatever you're writing with, would kind of slither out uncontrollably. So with our quill knife, we'll scuff up the inside of the barrel so that the ink, when it's loaded into it, will stay put and will release with a controlled flow. It won't slither out. On the right hand side, that's how our quill will look at this point. The nib part of it is too elongated, too flimsy, it won't hold up. So we have to make our first vertical cut. It'll make it stiffer and stouter and trim it up some. We make this cut with our quill knife. At this point, the end of the quill is a little bit too stiff, too thick. So we're going to thin it out a little bit by making a diagonal cut with a quill knife. This will narrow it out some and make for a nice thin. However, in doing so, it's actually a little bit too long a diagonal cut. So that after we make our diagonal cut, we'll make one more afterwards. The next cut we make will be our final vertical cut. It'll trim away the excess amount of diagonal so that we'll have a good, crisp, stout, broad edge writing tool that actually has a little thinness to it because of the diagonal that we had cut previously. We're now almost ready to use our quill to write with. Our last cut that we'll make with our quill knife will be the slit. We'll hold it vertically down towards the tip and make a little slit at the end of it. This way it can splay open and release the writing fluid and give us a nice broad-edged river of ink flowing from the end of the quill.